Guys, that game, like, so Counterlogic Gaming, to start it out, they have what looks like a better late game team. They've got Oriana for the team fight, they've got Vayne, they've got Jax. Like, those are the king and queen of late game. Yes. Now, I do want to draw a little parallel between them and Coast, because they're running a split push comp, which Coast always were running. And if you're running a team like this, if you make a little mistake in the mid game, then it crumbles in a dramatic fashion. And we just saw how TSM were able to take that one mistake from CLG and push it so hard. They got a Baron off of that mid-game pick and it completely snowballed in their favor. Yeah, it's, it's like really huge mistake by CLG to even ever put themselves in a position where they could get caught out. All they had to do was just keep split pushing and never team fight. Then you saw the moment that somebody, well, of course, Link got caught, but uh, the moment they team fought, they just got ran over and uh, TSM just plowed their comp. And a lot of that is also because of itemization, too. Like, people were, I guess they were getting okay. cocky and building, like, Zerkers on Nocturne. Yeah, talking about confidence, it was a, maybe a little overconfidence from CLG this time around. Those boots, uh, Berserker Greaves for Nocturne, maybe a little bit much. Yeah, um, it just really, really nice play of uh, getting that, that Thresh hook and catching Link out. And I almost feel like it's just CLG making a mistake rather than TSM playing good that game. I felt like if CLG had played that game 100% and played their comp how it's supposed to be played to the end and mm -hmm. just kept split pushing, it would have been CLG's game. So CLG definitely gave them the window, but you have to compliment X Special for coming up with the hook. And also for TSM, once they did get the opening, they ran away with it. And you, you can't really take that away from them. Yeah, the moment they got that Baron, they just, they yeah. just took it over. It's like, oh, um, there's your top in him, and there's your middle, and uh, there's a pentakill, and bye-bye. Uh, and we got to see the reason that they are taking these tanks, like Dyrus with the Mundo in the late game. He's ridiculous, you know, with uh, percentage health scaling so well, and with all the heals in the game, defensive st stats are really effective right now. So he became a, an unkillable tank, and, you know, CLG used a lot of stuff to try and take him down. Actually costs them the end of the game. Yeah, actually, let's actually take a look at a replay then. This is the, the big team that turns it around for TSM right in front of Baron. If you can get that up on your screen. You guys are talking about CLG being greedy here, Saint. Talk to me about this pick. Okay, CLG being greedy. Um, yeah, it's just Link being where he shouldn't be. There's no reason for him to be here. He ha they had their veins split pushing it out. They have Jack split pushing it out. Um, just what is Link going to be like? What is he doing waiting in this brush? Is he going to catch somebody and pick somebody off? There's he, just no reason for him to be he there. He was trying to clear the pink ward. <laughs> Dangerous oh, one to go for. Worth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Didn't even get the pink ward. It's a zero man tidal wave too. Yeah. After Link got picked off, um, there was a fight in bottom going on at the same time where Jax was fighting out Mundo, mm -hmm. and uh, I think. Uh, Jax hasn't been back to Bali in a while, so the Mundo just ended up just outclassing him and pushing him out. Um, and after this, they just get Baron, and you saw they just snowballed it from there. Yeah, so CLG, like, it was weird because, you know, Catalog Gaming Force making mistakes. TSM bided their time for, like, 10 minutes there, right? They're just like, okay, we're fighting Vayne, we're fighting Jax. Like, do you think it was, obviously it worked out for them, but do you think it was smart that they're, like, waiting around for these champions to scale up? Are they just looking for an opening knowing they're behind, or were TSM too afraid to make a move. Well, defending pink wards is one of the most common ways to get those turnarounds in the end game. So TSM did a good job with that one. Um, like I said, they capitalized on the hook. And also, Nien, not only did he not go back and buy, but also the hop over the wall didn't work out for him. Uh, yeah. So that the kind of fortunate timing where TSM's mistakes happened at the exact same time is what gave TSM the ability to Baron right after and why it snowballed against CLG so hard. Yeah, it was like the perfect series of events for them. Yeah. It's like everything happened that could have possibly happened. Like, oh, right, nice. Like, it's, it's almost it's like luck plus skill combined made great play. So then let's actually talk about some of the individual plays right here because uh, I know you guys were talking about it as well. Uh, the difference in junglers, Dexter once again significantly out farming uh, against the odd one there. He had like plus 10 stacks for the mid game before any team fights broke out. Do you think Odd One's not still reacting quite quite right to 4.5 and he's getting out farmed? Yeah, it looked like he was trying to go for counter ganks or ganks that wouldn't realistically happen. Um, and he got really behind on his Feral Flare. And you saw, they lost they lost a lot of dragons because of it. And their objective control just wasn't as good because of that. Like, yeah, they got some blues, they got uh, some buffs. It's I'd rather have that dragon gold at the end of the day. Like, blue on Ori is nice, but rather have the dragon gold. Yeah, honestly, CLG seemed to do a really good job of controlling objectives and dragons more than they normally do. Uh, but the other standout player I want to talk about is Bjergsen. Uh, for obvious reasons, we actually have a replay of his amazing pentakill there as they went to uh, almost close the game out on this one. Kobe, if you want to talk to us about this. Yeah, yeah let's watch this one through and see uh, what exactly CLG do use on Dyrus. So uh, they're trying to defend without the turret. Starting off with Nami Wave, not too bad. 
Dyrus is the only one that does get hit by it. I guess since he's on the front line there. Odd one gets one person with his ulti. Shockwave only hits Dyrus. And he still has his ult left up. So that's where TSM can, can turn it around. Because Dyrus basically has another life there with his ulti to go back in. And he ends able to take him out in the end. But as they said, Karma loves when the team comes into him. And Bjerg, this is where Bjergsen's able to shine. He was able to wait until CLG used all of their engage and most of their CC. Yeah. And then he gets to make moves. To be fair, Bjergsen's doing a great job hitting all of these cues. He hit every single one. And yeah, that's, was, that's, really a, that's how you get the pentacles. I liked how they play their team comp, too. It's just like, hey, Mundo, uh, go run around and soak up their abilities for a while and look like you're about to die. And here's like some shields, and we're going to engage now. And that karma did so much damage. I yeah. didn't expect any of that. I don't think it, uh, CLG did either. And I really like, this is really the difference between having those tank stats in this meta where there's all these heals, there's all these shields that are going on, uh, versus a split push team comp that doesn't get the split push. Like, everybody's building offensively, and in the team fight, they didn't have anyone who was able to soak anything up. Yeah, they just didn't build right for team fight, it looked like. Yeah, and as soon as TSM kind of grouped together, they made it all happen. So uh, that's it's interesting to me to look at the Karma coming out there because she was actually super popular as a top laner in Europe. Like, Diamond so, brought her out <laughs> to the jungle. Yeah. yeah, so I was playing him. Uh, there were a couple other top laners. I'm forgetting the names right now. But, like, then she came back this season support. Now she's back as a mid laner as well. <laughs> like, I know we're seeing a lot of support mids, like, who deal damage and whatnot, uh, you know, and all the shielding. But, like, I don't know. It's, it's weird. Like, Bjergsen's, like, I guess the guy to bring Karma mid bringing it out from Europe, bringing himself over, and then, you know, she's making this giant impact. Like, this is now a champion to worry about. There was some guy in solo queue that kept playing it for a long time. I think he might have, like, picked it up off him. I'm going to have to ask him on that. That's definitely a chance for that one. Uh, okay, so coming into game three, I mean, obviously incredibly close match in this one. TSM making the comeback happen. What are your thoughts on changes that I guess now CLG has to do to clinch this game three? It seemed like they're winning game one, winning most of game two. Mm. What's wrong now? I think they just need to stick to their guns. They picked this split push team comp, and then you saw they had that one fight where Nocturne and Jax randomly engaged mid, and then they end up losing two people, but they got Dragon, and yeah. it looked like they had the right idea with how they wanted to play their team comp, and then they just forgot it mid-game. So, kind of weird decision-making. I think the onus is still on TSM, actually, to make changes. Even though they won this game, there's still things that they have to clean up. And I want to call back to yesterday, actually, Curse were able to make adaptations midway through the set where they cleaned up their early lane uh, swaps and were able to actually match the speed of turret taking. Uh, TSM actually has to do that towards the mid game because they're fine with the early two taking turrets. Um, it's the mid game movements around the wrap after those turrets are down that they do need to clean up a little bit. All right, well, we'll see if they can make those adaptations. Guys, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll see who advances to the finals and a shot of the Spring Split title. It's game three between Team Solomid and Counter Logic Gaming right after this.